In this video, I want to show you how to how to use a, a parameter from one part in your assembly for use in another part of the assembly. This is an assembly I made a long time ago, and I want to be able to go into assemblies, not have to worry about how I made them a long time ago, and just hope they work or, or know that they can provide the functionality that I need. And when I made this one, I was probably doing it correctly where I would create the rail or this particular part which is so I'm calling a rail, it's a high wind rail and it has certain specifications, there's a width to the rail there's a height to the rail, there's a hole diameter, there's a counterbore diameter there's a space from the beginning of the rail and then there's hole spacing so I'm hoping that I've created the hole spacing because this is what I want. I want to put all of the holes for this particular part with respect to the the part, the, the rail. So I want to actually create some ovals for every hole position all the way across. And I'm using ovals because I want to make sure that if I buy these uh, these off-the-shelf parts that I didn't make, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm going to be able to have some level of adjustability so I can all the holes will be used even though there's there might be some misalignment. So I'm going to go ahead and to add on that actually I want to go back to add you know sometimes companies will specify hole dimensions from hole to hole and then they will measure from this hole to this hole and then this hole to this hole and then this hole to this hole. They won't actually measure or I don't know all of them but some manufacturers may not measure from this hole to this hole and use a reference always at uh, the beginning hole because if you're measuring from hole to hole there's an error that can add up all the way across and then you can be off at the end so just in case that is happening it's probably not but just in case I want to make these ovals all the way across so I'm going to go into this part and see what parameter I'm using to specify the hole spacing. I should be able to just go into this part and then just link to this one. I don't even know the name of this one. Let's see what the name is. It's high wind rail Y axis. So let's open this one up just to see. I would normally probably not open it up and just hope the parameter is there. But let's take a look at it. I'm gonna um, let's take a look at this. This is a pattern so this is probably not the beginning hole. I'm gonna go back over here and see if this is the initial hole. And sometimes the initial hole is part of the pattern. In this in this case, it isn't. And this one hole is probably a pattern. So it's a rectangular pattern. So what I did is I created a rectangular pattern, an array of all of these. And you can see that it goes all the way past the end of the, the rail, just in case I wanted to make the rail longer, the holes would still appear. So let's take a look at the parameters and let's see if I have that. It looks like I have something called high wind rail hole spacing and it looks like it's 60 millimeters. Let's confirm that that is correct. I'm going to use my measurement tool. Okay so it's 2.362 inches and that sounds like it would be 60 millimeters and if there are 25.4 millimeters per inch so that would be 50 plus about 0.362 it's probably 60 millimeters there so this looks like it's the correct measurement and the correct parameter that I'm finding so I know it's called high wind rail hole spacing so let's go back to my other assembly I'm not gonna save any modifications and I'm gonna open up this one here because I want to apply it to this part. So this is the beginning hole that I created. So I want to create the ovals along this uh, line here. And it looks like I also have a hole here as well. So I want to, actually I want to create ovals along this line and then ovals along this line as well. So I'm going to, because it's not a hole, I, I need to create a sketch of it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. I'm going to create a sketch on top of this face and I'm going to use this hole as a reference. So I'm going to let's see project geometry and now I have that hole as a as a part of the sketch that I can use. 
So I'm going to go ahead and just create a slot with a center. This is under the rectangle icon. I'm going to create a slot and it's and, and it's and it's with reference um, as a from the center. I'm going to just create it anywhere. I'm going to do it with a horizontal constraint and I can make it any any size I want. I'm going to use my constraints to create the the correct size. So I know I'm going to want the diameter to be the same as this diameter. So I'm going to just make this equal to this. So now they're going to be the same dimension in this in this direction. Now I want to make it aligned to this circle here and I'm going to use the horizontal constraint again. Click on this point and then I'm going to click on the center. I could have probably clicked on this one because it's it's on a horizontal constraint anyway. And now I want to make this width you can see that this is green. That means that is unconstrained. The blue is constrained. The blue um, line here is constrained. And also this point is um, non-constrained. So I can actually move this back and forth. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I could click and drag this and it'll go back and forth, but it won't go up and down. I can take this and I can make it smaller or wider. So what I want to do is I want to try to constrain that. So I'm going to dimension the entire width I want to make that probably about 0.5 and I'm going to constrain this horizontally uh, measurement from this circle here so what I want to use is the hole spacing so I'm going to go in the parameters and I'm going to press the link button and I want to find that part that I want to take that parameter out of and you can see that I'm selecting the part or assembly, not an Excel file. I don't like using the Excel file because then I have to associate um, the Excel file with many parts and it takes time for those parts to, to get the parameters it needs. And when I'm um, changing the Excel file, it has to go through all of those parts and update those parts. So it takes a little bit of time. I'd rather use the, the inventor part file for that. So I'm gonna go to uh, the rail Y axis and it's a part and I'm going to use the high wind rail hole spacing and I'm going to click on this icon to derive it and I'm going to press OK so now I can access that parameter in this this set of parameters let's go take a look okay it's right here high wind rail y-axis and it's the high wind rail hole spacing press done and now I'm going to dimension from here to here I'm going to use that 60 millimeters list parameters high wind rail hole spacing and accept that so now you can see it is fully constrained it's all blue everything is blue in this so it cannot be moved anymore now I want to apply a rectangular pattern so it goes all the way across but first I want to do another one of these down here I guess I could uh, use a rectangular pattern and do it in two directions but for me that's a little bit overly complicated I don't really need to do that I'm gonna go ahead and just draw another slot and really I can draw it anywhere and at, at any angle so I can just apply the horizontal constraint make it horizontal I can make the horizontal constraint apply to this hole here but you can see that I can't actually um, use it because it hasn't been projected so I'm going to press escape and get out of that horizontal constraint and click on project geometry and then just select, select that circle now I can go ahead and do that I'm going to constrain it to that horizontal constraint and I can do a few things I can uh, to make it match the width of this I can use the equals and have this line equal this line or I can use the vertical constraint um, and constrain this point to this point and then this point to that point I'd rather just make the line equal so it'll be a little bit easier and now I want to use the equal again and match the diameter of this hole here now you can see that I still need to do a vertical constraint but I'm going to use it from the center. Probably would have been easier just to do a vertical constraint on either side, but it doesn't really matter. 
There's so many ways to do this. And now I'm going to do a rectangular. Before I do the rectangular um, pattern, I'm going to add another dimension. And I'm going to dimension from here to this line here. And this will create, because I, you know, this, because this uh, part can change size when I change, uh, for this particular machine, I can change the width of its travel. Um, that dimension will change and the number of holes will change. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this because it's telling me that this is already all dimensioned. Uh, I have this part fully dimensioned and it's going to be just a driven dimension and that's what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. So now I have a driven dimension that is 63.236 inches. And I'm going to use that to determine how many of these I'm going to be drawing and or how many of these I'm going to be rectangular patterning. But first I want to extrude it because I want the extrusion to be a part of the pattern as well. So let's if you didn't do the extrusion first and you just pattern uh, you just did a pattern on the sketch, then you'll have some errors when you uh, when you have and you'll have to extrude every single one of them uh, uh, manually. So it's better just to extrude it and then you can actually you could actually have a long line of these features be applied across and even past it and it won't give you an error. So let's go ahead and do an extrusion. I'm going to finish the sketch because I'm done making those two. And now I'm going to apply an extrude and I'm going to click on profile so I can select what I want to extrude. And then I'm going to want to go through the part so I'm going to instead of go distance I'm going to use all so it's going to go through the part completely. I'm going to press OK. So now we can see that there is a part or there's a feature that shows a slot. Now I'm going to do a rectangular pattern here, not in the sketch. I'm going to do the rectangular pattern in this location. I'm going to select this feature and well those two features are the same because it's on the same sketch. So now I'm going to set um, determine my direction and it's going in the wrong direction so I'm going to reverse the direction and now I want to use that same parameter from the hole spacing uh, high wind rail so I have the right parameter but I don't have the, the right number of units so I'm going to go ahead and accept that let's just see what it does so it looks like I have two of them so I need to use that dimension and I need to go back to the dimensioning and I need to specify that dimension or give it a name so let's see if I ah oh, here it is see this is the reference parameters these are the derived parameters and I'm going to change the name to I'm not really sure what to name it but that sounds like it's enough information for for the time being at least so I'm gonna press done and now I'm gonna go back to that pattern so I can just click on this edit extrude no I'm gonna go over here and I should be able to get that pattern let's see yeah edit rectangular pattern so I go to the second one and it gives me that pattern and I'm gonna to go to this specification I'm going to where is the one I just created? Gantry front width for rail holes. Oops, not that one. Okay, so it shows in red because this is actually a dimension. Let me do this again here. Okay. So it shows in red because this is not a number. It's not a, un, um, a UL. It's, you can see that it says warning expected UL, which is a standard number, but found inches instead. So I want to divide the hole spacing, divide this by the hole spacing, and then I'm, I'm going to get a number. So a measurement divided by the same type of measurement is a number because it's the units cancel out. So 
it looks like I have many more than I need, which is kind of strange. Let's see, why did that happen? Well, it's actually good that this happened because I want to show you that it doesn't actually matter if it's too long, but I'm going to figure out why it had such a long value. So let's press OK. And you can see that even though it ran off the edge, it still doesn't error and doesn't give us an error uh, because it went too far. So I could just leave it like this, but I don't like that. So I'm going to figure out why it did this. So if I take that number, which was 63.236, 63 63.236, and divide it by 2. Point, I think it was 36, something like that. I got 26 of them. Let's so let's see. There should be a uh, yeah no oh you know what I used the wrong one this I used high wind rail and block height so I actually need this is part of the rectangular pattern you can see the information I just used it's it, this particular let me show this any more understandable way edit pattern you can see that I can't make this wider this is actually a another parameter that that goes onto the parameter list and let's see if I hover over it it should yeah D220 so it shows 53 units so instead of changing it here I'm going to change it in the other location just to show you a different way to do it and it's a little bit easier to see here anyway. So 220 is this one. And we want to use a different specification. And that's going to be the whole spacing. So that should give us, if I press enter, should change this number, 26 of them. That looks right. OK, so if I. Yeah, there you go. So if I just hover over that, you'll see that the number is now correct. So that worked. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. Uh, you know, I want to change one thing just to show a really cool feature. If I go into this sketch and I, let's say, change it to Maybe 0.5 is a little too much. Maybe I want it to be 0.3. So it's a little bit more of a smaller oval. I finish the sketch and all of them match that same specification. So I'm going to go ahead and exit this out and see how it applies to the assembly. And it looks like it worked quite well. And if I go in, I can see that the hole is centered in all of them all the way to the end and now I can just hope when I do buy these they will be measured correctly and if they're not uh, they're not going to be so bad that it's going to be outside of this oval space okay so that is how to use a parameter from another part and I pretty much do this throughout my designing so if I change the width of this entire part or change some dimension, it can be matched all the way through the entire assembly. I hope that helps. Thank you for watching.